Hi there, I'm Alex Banks and welcome to my workshop. Today we're going to be making a backplate for a GTX 1060 from MSI. We're going to be making the whole thing out of aluminium and we're going to be doing lots of hand finishing. That's the main focus we're going to be doing today. We're going to be cutting out some complex shapes on the scroll saw, finishing with files and we're going to be doing some pots on the lathe as well. And it should be really quite exciting, I'm looking forward to it. So we're going to be working with this template that I drew up earlier. We're going to be using Lucky the Dragon on the back plate. We're going to have it so that it's cut right through the metal. Um, and so these templates are going to be quite simple. We're going to put them onto the aluminium and we're going to fix it using spray adhesive. So it's important after applying the spray adhesive to leave it for a few minutes. It has to dry and reach a sort of a tacky state before you can put the paper on. Otherwise it will warp and it will soak the design that you're trying to cut. So it's been a few minutes, the glue is dried, got the specs on, cut off the excess material. We're now going to be going to the scroll saw to do the rough cuts around the edges uh, before finishing. This is an expensive machine. You can get many of these ones quite cheaply online. You can have second hand uh, in the junior ones. This one isn't a particularly high end model, uh, but it does the job very well for thin aluminium and for even for steel and brass. If you don't have a scroll saw, you can also use something like a jigsaw, for instance. Uh, it's very good for these exact sort of cuts. Of course, you can also use a Dremel with a reinforced cut-off wheel to do the same job as well. It takes longer, I don't personally recommend it, but you can do it, and it works very well for softer materials like plastics. So, of course, another method you can use is with a hand saw, such as this coping saw. Uh, they're very good for materials like aluminium and plastics. Uh, and they have the advantage of being readily accessible and very much inexpensive. So now we have a fully roughed out back plate, uh, but you'll notice the edges are not smooth yet. So we're going to get these nice and flat, nice and straight, and hopefully looking nice and finished. We're going to be using a few different methods so I can show you how you can do this at home. Of course, if you don't have a belt sander, you can always use files. Uh, this is a preferred method of mine, actually. It gives you a lot of control, and it doesn't take very long at all. And we're going to finish up all the corners and parts with needle files. This allows you to get a nice, even finish, and gives you complete control over the part. So with the edges nice and flat, the next step is to drill all the holes. We're going to be center punching in all of these little X's, and this is a very important step. You need to center punch, because otherwise the smaller drill bits will wander and they won't be in the center of the holes. And this is particularly important for larger diameter holes because we're going to be drilling several sizes. I'm going to be using trusty pillar drill, but of course if you don't have a drill like this at home, you can always just use a handheld drill. Okay, so we began with the four millimeter drill and then we stepped it up to 5.5 millimeters and then all the way to seven millimeters for the holes that need to be that size. And then the last few holes we've gone with nine and 10 millimeter drill bits. So we're going to set it up on the scroll saw now for the fine interior cutting. Uh, don't worry if you don't have a scroll saw at home because you can always use a jeweler's saw or a coping saw uh, with the piece fastened to a table or a kitchen counter. So we've got the first section of the interior cutting done on this one. And as if by magic, here's one that I finished up earlier. So we've done all the finished cuts, I've also sanded the edges, and I've done the front finishing as well as the little spaces. We'll be going through how to make that and finish those parts off in a second. So here I've decided I'm going to make some custom spaces from solid brass for my back plate, uh, I, simply because I have a lathe. If you don't have a lathe, uh, you're perfectly fine using standard washers you can buy online or in a hardware store. So here we have the finished back plate from earlier. I'm going to be showing you how to achieve the same brushed aluminium finish with this test piece over here. So to remove the template we put on earlier, simply pour over some acetone and it should dissolve the fixative. So we're going to start by sanding this side nice and flat, removing all the burrs and anything protruding. Uh, remember, safety specs, dust is danger. We're going to start with 180 grit, get it nice and smooth, and then we're going to progress from there. Now we're swapping to 320 grit. And now finally, we're going to change to 500 grit for this final surface finish. So 
So now with the surfaces nice and flat, it's time to apply the actual brushed finish to the back. Uh, the way we're going to be doing this is we're going to start with 120 grit emery paper and then we're going to move to an, a wet sanding 800 grit and then we're going to go down a grit again once it's smooth to get a really nice defined pattern. So the most important part of doing a brushed finish is always to go in one direction. If you go multiple directions you'll have lines that weave left and right and you won't get that nice singular grain. And give the part a quick clean with some acetone And then to finish up, just for a little bit extra luster, we're going to use some Brasso just to pick up the little extra bit of shine. Right, with the back plate finished, now it's time to attach it to the card itself. So if you have any questions about the process or suggestions for future videos, just drop a comment below.